Amen. We're going to worship God in this place. We want to welcome everyone out this Sunday evening to our Bible study. We're going to go ahead and uh, uh, worship the Lord in this place, establish His presence. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, worship God as we sing that song. I'm so glad. And I'm so glad.
not just read it, Lord, but learn it and live it. Father, Lord, I ask you to guide us, Father, Lord, this evening, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Just want to welcome everyone out this evening uh, to the Door Christian Fellowship Church here in Barbina. I uh, really want to extend a warm welcome to everyone in this place. We do appreciate you this evening. We're glad to have you. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, 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 we're going to just get into uh, our order of service. And by the way, I turned off the heater. If you guys are cold, let me know. I'll turn it back on. But I kind of warmed up. I figured you are all right. But if you guys get cold, let me know. <laughs> all right. So uh, uh, just again, just want to give a few brief announcements of what we have in our order of service. As a way of reminder, I remind you that we're here every uh, every Sunday. We're here Sunday mornings at 10.30. We meet in the parking lot. As I mentioned, this next Sunday morning, we have a, a special uh, guest speaker that's going to be here. And so I encourage you to come on out. That's going to be next Sunday at 10.30. Uh, then our evening service uh, uh, is every Sunday evening at uh, 6.30 as we go through our, our, our Sunday school on the, the book of Genesis, studying on the call of Abraham. And so very powerful study. Uh, so that's every Sunday evening at 6.30. And then also as a way of reminder, uh, every Wednesday we have our service. And this month we've gotten into our marriage series, uh, uh, Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage. We showed part one this last Wednesday night. Very powerful, very effective way of bringing the message. And so that was a, uh, we're doing that every Wednesday uh, for the next month. However, this Wednesday, remember, we're going to be in conference. So we will not be having service. Uh, but I will be sending out uh, uh, the, tech, uh, the, the, uh, the link to the conference uh, so that you can watch uh, with us. Uh, so throughout the week, uh, again, the, the conference starts, uh, they, they actually started tonight, they usually start on Sunday there. Uh, but uh, but uh, the, 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 for us, it's going to start tomorrow night, it'll be the first service. Uh, and uh, like I said, I'll send you the link so you can watch with us. We'll be there, they'll be here. It'll be a great opportunity to watch together. So uh, that's going to be throughout the week, including Wednesday. As I mentioned, Wednesday we will not be open, uh, but uh, you can watch the, uh, the, co the conference video uh, online. And so that'll be a great opportunity for you. And then, uh, um, and then like I said, in the following Wednesday, uh, once we come back to conference, we'll resume with our uh, the marriage seminar. So that's going to be it's a four-part series. Uh, and so we will be short in part two when we get back. Other than that, um, looking further ahead, on the 30th, there's going to be a men's discipleship here at our church. Uh, we we'll have prayer at 10 o'clock, and then at 11 o'clock, we'll get into our discipleship, uh, and then uh, outreach at 12 o'clock. And then the following day, we're going to be showing the second part in the series, The Chosen. Uh, very powerful. It will be a tasty bite and movie night. It's going to be a great opportunity for you to invite someone out. Uh, and so I encourage you to do that and come yourself. You'll be greatly blessed by it. And so other than that, that's all the announcements that we have for now. I want to go ahead and take an offering before the Lord of this evening. And as we take an offering, I want to uh, remind you, so this morning I mentioned we're taking up a pledge, uh, an offering that I'll be taking to uh, the Prescott Conference. We do that every time we go. Pastor Bruce uh, uh, would always do that before he went to conference. And now that I've taken over the helm, I do that as well, uh, because, you know, we want to be faithful as a church uh, uh, to give and all that God's going to do. As I mentioned, uh, conference time is a very critical time uh, to, uh, you know, our announcements are made, destinies are forged. Uh, you know, I think about, you know, you know, so many years ago, like, probably, I think like 2003, uh, Pastor Bruce was sent out on conference, right? Sent out to the Tucson Conference, sent out here to the South Bay. Because of that, there's a church here. Right, he was sent out by Pastor Warner, and one day Pastor Warner was launched out of his, uh, of his own conference right there in Preston. Uh, and again, as I mentioned this morning, all that was made possible out of faithfulness uh, uh, of God's people that were in that church. Right now, it's our opportunity to bless our grandmother. Right, that's our grandmother, Preston. And so we want to be faithful to bless them. Uh, and so I want to take up an offering for that. Uh, if, you, if you don't have what you're able to get tonight, uh, just write it down on a piece of paper. And just put it in, and uh, I'll, we'll honor that. And you can bring it in by next week, and I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, cover whatever you pledge. And that way we can bless the, the present congregation. And so I want to read a portion of scripture of the book of Proverbs as we take up the offering, the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. And in verse 27, the Bible says, 
do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in the power of your hand to do so. Right? And so this is our opportunity to do something good, right? Got an opportunity to invest in what God is doing there in Prescott. Right, uh, because you know what? Uh, uh, there's other churches that are going to be planted, and other, uh, you know, the uh, destinies are going to be affected. Uh, as you know, our destinies have been affected here because there's a church here, right? And uh, and again, that was made possible by the faithfulness of God's people. So let's go ahead and take the offering. We'll uh, pray on the offering, and then we'll sing that song that Jesus hired. There's a couple ways that you can give. You can give here live. You can drop your offering in the plate, or you can give online. You can go to the, uh, our website. The door sb.com. If you do that, uh, you follow the online giving link. It's very easy. You're able to give your offering there. Uh, you give your tithe. Uh, as you do that, we'll be greatly blessed. And so uh, I'm thankful for uh, God's people that have been faithful uh, to give uh, during this whole time. I just want to encourage you to continue to be faithful in that this evening. So let's go ahead and pray. Uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace, for your mercy, for the privilege that it is to be a part of your kingdom. And you give this strength. I pray that you will put it upon our hearts. Lord, give it to the church and we'll live our hearts. Oh God, you will bless us. We'll give us another thing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's lift Jesus high. Lift Jesus high. Lift Jesus high. Lift them up for the world to see. Let it Sodom. He wasn't in Sodom. He just nearly 
against the Torah side, right? And again, it's the picture of sin, right? Sometimes we kind of get close enough to the edge to not really be in it, but we're close enough, right? And that's what uh, that's where Lot was. But eventually, the Bible says uh, he was in Sodom, right? Uh, and again, uh, that's the, uh, the, the, the the spiral, the downward spiral of sin that we start start by being attracted. And we start walking towards it, and eventually we end up in it, uh, and ultimately it ends up in us, right? Because at the end of it all, uh, you know, here uh, uh, Lot, you know, he ends up, uh, you know, pitching his tent towards Sodom, ends up in Sodom, and at the end, Sodom ends up in Lot. And that's the great tragedy of Lot's story, right? And this again is a picture of sin, that we begin to go towards sin, that we're attracted toward, uh, to it, we walk towards it. We walk into it, and eventually sin enters into us, right? And so that's where we find a lot. And so now here we come across a chapter in, uh, in chapter 19, as we now we find uh, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah that shows us the world without God, right? Uh, it's ugly, it's repulsive, uh, it's a city where they were completely taken, uh, uh, given over to their sin. Right? It reminds us a lot of our modern cities, right? There are cities that are entirely given over to sin. And so uh, this is where uh, we find uh, uh, Sodom, they're completely given over to uh, sexual immorality. And, uh, I, and here in Sodom, we find it kind of, again, much like modern cities. Uh, uh, here we find uh, uh, the depravity and corruption, but we also find a very wealthy uh, and well to do city, right? Uh, it was very, uh, uh, you know, it would have been, Sodom would have been the San Francisco of its day. San Francisco is one of the most expensive and wealthiest cities uh, in America, right? So, and, and yet, uh, it's also one of the most corrupt cities in America, right? And that's what Sodom was. Sodom was very corrupted, but very wealthy. And that's what attracted, uh, uh, that's what attracted a lot. Lot wasn't so much attracted by its immorality, he was attracted by the prospect of prosperity, right? He looked towards Sodom and said, well, I can make a buck there, I can become wealthy, I can really make it. And so that's what attracted him to the city, right? And, uh, and again, this is a, uh, so here we find him, and at the end, uh, we find this tragic, the tragic story of Lot's life. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, get into our chapter, we're going to be uh, giving some scriptures and so uh, with my short hands, who's going to read this? Uh, is he all, all three of you? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, give a few scriptures. By default. Um, and we'll begin. <laughs> and we begin at uh, Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. I'm going to have to look for it. And then, Connie, if you can get Genesis 18, 1 through 5. Jason, if you can get 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. And then we'll start to circle over again at that point. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to, again, I'll begin by reading chapter 19. This, this, is, uh, this chapter is really chock full of nutrients, <laughs> of uh, lessons that we can learn. And so very rich, very a lot to learn as we, uh, so we start chapter 19, verse 1. The Bible says, Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself uh, with his face towards the ground. And he said, Here now, my lords, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night, wash your feet. Then you may rise up. Uh, early and go on your way. And they said, no, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly, so they turned into him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked on the <coughs> bread, and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, surrounded the house, and they called to Lot and said to him, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them carnally. So Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind them, and said, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. See, now I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may uh, do to 
them as you wish, only do nothing to these men, since, the, since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. And then they said, this one came in to stay here, and he keeps acting as a judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the man Lot and came near to break down the door. But the men reached out their hand and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they became weary trying to find the door. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here? Son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whoever, whomever you have in the city. Take them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, uh, uh, who had married his daughters, and he said, uh, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But to his sons-in-law, he seemed to be joking. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him out outside the city. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside, and he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Then Lot said to them, Please know, my lords, indeed now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy, which you have shown me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil overtake me, and I die. So uh, see now, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Please let me escape. There is not a little one, and my soul shall live. And he said to him, See, I have, found, I have favored you concerning this thing also, and that I will not overthrow this city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zohar. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Soar. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord, then he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and towards all the land of the plain, and he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the city of the plain, that God remembered Abraham, and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. Then Lot went up uh, out of Zohar, and dwelt in the mountains, and his two daughters were with him. For he was afraid to dwell in Zohar, and he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave. Now the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on the earth to come into us, as is the custom of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that he may preserve the lineage of our father. So they, they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went, did, uh, went and he did not know where she lay down to, uh, or when she arose, uh, it happened on the next day that the firstborn said to the younger, Indeed, I lay with my father last night, let us make him drink wine tonight also. And you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage uh, of our father. Then they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Thus both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father, Firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. And the younger she also bore a son and called his name Ben Ami. He is the father of the people of Ammon to this day.
Let's pray this evening. Father God, I pray tonight in this place. Lord, that you are speaking to our hearts. Help us, Lord God. Lord, give us revelation of your word, of the lesson that you want us to learn, Lord God, from this chapter, Lord God. Lord, I pray you would deliver us, Lord God, from, from sinful compromise, Lord God. Lord, that we would not pitch our tents towards this world, Lord God, but give us the victory over sin. And we thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's a very tragic story. Uh, you know, as I, as I mentioned this before, but you know, uh, the Bible is not, you know, it's not the type of book you would make up. You know, the Bible is made up. You know, if you would make up a story, you wouldn't add that in there. <laughs> right? You wouldn't. You would like make it sound all nice and, you know, peachy, rosy, you know, everything was always a, a great, uh, uh, the, the Bible has got some, you know, it, it gives us some issues. There were some things going on and we thought that uh, you know that uh, uh, you know was that uh, desperate housewives was crazy, right? And, uh, the Bible <laughs> it, it outdoes them all, right? And this shows us the reality of the Bible that the Bible uh, really cuts no corners and it doesn't just sugarcoat the truth, uh, but it's there for our example, and that's why the story is here because it's, it serves as an example to you and I, uh, as I mentioned, of the, uh, of the compromise of sin and where it takes us to. And so this is where we find a lot, and so we're gonna. Get into our 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 question uh, our uh, our sheet here our uh, study guide as we start again we're going to start uh, uh, go through the questions and we'll answer them together. So the first question that we come across is uh, uh, what is the significance of Lot sitting in the gate of Sodom? Right? Because the Bible says when we find uh, uh, Lot is in now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. So what's significant about that? Why do you think the Bible tells us that? That he lives there now? Instead mm -hmm. of just like being near it? Okay, that he lived in there? Yeah, we talked right, we talked about how he went, he went towards it, now he's in it, so that's one thing. But there's actually something significant about being at the gate. Does everybody know what that is? What that means? Not to us not into it, but not, but in that day, in its context, that is to, to sit at the gate actually meant something. Like a gatekeeper or something? Like he was part of like what was going on? Uh, what it, so sitting at the gate, you know, the, um, what it was actually was it was a place of promise, prominence and position. So it shows us that Lot had a position in, Lot, in, in, in uh, Sodom. And that's what so those that would sit at the gate, uh, it was kind of like a kind of like a civic center, right? Like today, you know, we would have, you know, when you go to city, you have city hall, you have the civic center, right? You have the uh, council members that sit there and they, they you know, they, they uh, go over the issues that uh, pertain to the city. So that's, that's what it meant when, uh, when somebody would be at the gate. Uh, in those days, to sit at the gate meant uh, that you were a part of that, of that government. You were an official. And so this tells us that a lot. In fact, later on, remember, uh, the, the people of Sodom kind of complained against God and said, hey, this stranger came to us uh, and now he wants to be judge over us because to a certain degree he was a judge. He was uh, very likely a member of the council there. It's like, remember, I told you, so remember, that's what attracted uh, uh, Lot, right? It was the, 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 the wealth and the power that he could get in, in, in Sodom, and so that's what he did. He went into Sodom, and he, uh, you know, he pulled the right levers, he, uh, you know, played the game, and he was able to get into a place of power and prominence, and that's where we find him now. Uh, he's there uh, sitting at the gate. Uh, as, as I mentioned, it's kind of like a town hall. This was where important men of the city would judge disputes. They conferred with one another, and they super supervised those who entered and left the city. So kind of, like, our brother said, kind of like a gatekeeper, right? Uh, and so this is what uh, so this is what we find lots of uh, um, Actually, we're going to read uh, Ezekiel 16:49. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride fullness of the food and abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. And so this goes back to what we're talking about, Sodom being a wealthy city. Uh, and so now Lot had kind of intermingled with that now, right? He had to become a member of the ruling class there. Uh, and, and so that's where we find him. So now uh, we go to question number two, and that is, why did Lot rise? Why did he rise up to meet the two men? 
Hospitality. Hospitality, right? So, and who does that remind you of? Abraham. Abraham, right? So that, this kind of shows us that uh, to a certain degree, his uncle had influence over his life, right? Remember, he grew up uh, with his uncle, and he must have watched him the way he was, and his hospital, his uh, hospitableness, and so now, Lot being a grown man, he still has some good qualities in him, right? In fact, the Bible tells us later on, we'll read that, the Bible talks about Lot being a righteous man. If there was something that had been imparted into his life. And that's why it's such a sad story, because Lot was a man of great potential, right? He had a lot of good qualities, a lot of things that had been imparted to his life, but, but he wastes them away there in Sodom. And so uh, this brings us to actually to question number three, which is, uh, uh, in what ways was Lot's hospitality sim similar to Abraham? Go ahead and read uh, uh, chapter 18, verse 1 through 5. And kind of we'll see what we're, and we'll compare that to, this, uh, to these verses. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees of Mamre as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. After that, you may pass by inasmuch as you have come to your servant. They said, do as you have said. Okay, now I'll read uh, the book of chapter 19, which is parallel to that. It says, when Lot saw them, he rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, hear now, my lords, please turn to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet, and then you may rise early and go your way. And they said, no, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly, so they turned into him and entered his house. And then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. So one of the, the comparisons here that we, we find that was uh, uh, Sister Connie read Abraham's hospitality, and I read lots. And so what, what are some of the similarities that you see? That, what did both of them do? Um, they, they both, like, actually went to them and, you know, said, hey, you know, stay here. Let your servants serve you, you know. And that's what... Abraham did for Jesus and the two angels, you know, and they took him into the tent. And so basically Lot did the same thing as Abraham and took him, tried to take him into his house, you know, mm -hmm. and to serve him, you know. Right. So he persuaded them, right? Yeah. Very persuasive. Another uh, thing we see that both, both uh, Lot and Abraham, both of them bowed down, right? Both of them bowed down and, uh, uh, and, uh, and you know, and refer to them as our lords. Uh, um, so they they show their, their, their submissiveness. What else do we see? They wanted to wash their feet, feed them. Right? So they, were, they both were, you know, minister to them, right? Yeah. And so that's, uh, so, uh, so that's, so here again, it, it shows us uh, the good quality that had been imparted into Lot's life. Right? And so now we come to question number four. Uh, why did Lot dissuade them from staying in the open square? Right? Remember, here the two men were like, no, you know what, we'll just stay in the open square. And back then, you know, you, you know, people would do that. And, uh, the open square was kind of like, uh, you know, like the downtown area of the city, it was like the main plaza. And so why, why, do you think, uh, uh, um, why do you think Lot discouraged them from doing that? Because he knew about the city's wickedness. Yeah, right? He was aware of it. Right? So this shows us that he was not ignorant to what was going on around him. And so, uh, so again, as I mentioned, you know, the open square would have been like our downtown, right? Going into downtown, and that's where all the crime is happening, all the action is at. And so he knew, he understood full well how dangerous uh, uh, it would have been for them to do that. All right? Now, question number five. Why did the men of the city come to Lot's house? To get him out of there. Right? Did they want to invite him over for coffee? Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> and some pan dulce, too. <laughs> some pan dulce? Of course. Something else boosted up. Yeah, yeah so, we, so here we see, and so here uh, we find them uh, wanting to uh, sexually abuse these men, right? And, uh, and so here we find, this is where we find the full uh, course of, uh, of, of corruption uh, when it takes its full course, right? And this is, uh, again, uh, the the... the the pattern of sin, right? And, and it's not only in a person, right? But we see it in cities, we see it in areas, and 
we see how uh, it progresses uh, uh, to get to this point, right? And so now, uh, the Bible says that all of all the men of the city, right, young and old, to show that they were all involved in this, right? And it's crazy to think about because you know we think about you know things that you hear now and. You know, like, especially uh, you guys have been keeping up with uh, that, what's that one guy, the, that rich guy that ended up supposedly killing himself? Call it those. Epstein. What's it? Epstein. Epstein, oh. right? And, uh, and you know, it's really dirty when, you know, you find out when, like, the man did it. The people that, what's crazy, the people that were involved in it, the you know, official people in government, uh, uh, you know, all these uh, uh, corrupted uh, uh, government officials that were, you know, Hanging out on his island, and, and so you know, and that just gave us a little sneak peek you know, into what's going on. And there's a lot that we don't realize that's going on behind the scenes. And uh, I think that I think to be honest, I think that's part of the big reason why uh, we live in a time where uh, so many people are willing to turn a blind eye to immorality, right? You know, uh, you know, people, oh no, we want to be accepting now of like the homosexual lifestyle, but bring it because you know what? Take your eyes off of me. Because you know what, you know they're doing their own dirt, and so it's like it's kind of a way to cover up their own sin, right? To justify their own uh, filthiness, and so uh, you know they'll, they'll, they'll you know they'll kind of kind of smoke screen, you know, and you know they act like oh you know we're gonna be very excited. It's it really there's more to it, right? Uh, and so I think that's a uh, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, and this is a, again the full course of, of compromising with sin. This is where we find Sodom, right? Uh, uh, to the point uh, where now this has become an acceptable. Uh, a thing among the people of Sodom that become acceptable behavior. Right? And that's the problem with sin, right? That once you begin to compromise, once you begin to accept it a little bit of it, uh, little by little, it begins to creep in until like I said, it runs in full course. Uh, and sin will always, I remember Pastor Bruce used to always say this, uh, uh, sin will always take you further than you ever wanted to go, and it will cost you more than you were be a able to pay, right? Uh, something like that. <laughs> right, and it's true. That's 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 what sin does. And so now, and I'm sure it did a lot. You know, when he began to compromise, and you know, in the beginning, uh, you know, he, he probably, you know, he under, he thought, you know, I'm sure he saw the wickedness, uh, but that was not be that bad. You know, as long as, uh, right, because this is what people say: as long as you're not hurting nobody, you know, do what you do, right? And as long as you don't mess with me. But eventually, we saw that it did affect his life, right? That's the problem with sin. A, a sin doesn't always stay out there. You compromise with it, it's going to end up in here, right? Uh, and so that's that's what we find here. Uh, so question number six. Why did Lot offer up his daughters to the men of the city? Like a trade-off? You know, like, hey, don't don't hurt them. Don't touch them. But here, here are my daughters. You know, they're, they're clean. They're, they've never been with the man, so... Right. Do what you want, you know. Yeah, right. He went, so he, uh, especially when, when this is one of the sad things, especially in those days where women were really looked down upon, and uh, they, you know, so here you know, he was willing to honor his guests, uh, which at this point he didn't know they were angels. Remember, uh, to, no, nowhere in the scripture at this point does it tell us that, they, that they hadn't, you know, done any miracles yet. So at this point, he just thinks these are two just regular men that are passing by, uh, and uh, you know, and he's willing to protect them over his own daughters, right? Uh, uh, and so this is a, uh, it, it was a horrible offer. Uh, it can't be justified, you know, and, and, and uh, it just shows the depravity. Uh, and it shows us, you know, again, his own uh, compromises. You know, he's beginning to, uh, he's beginning to uh, kind of uh, justify his own actions, right? Well, you know, when, uh, you know I'm protecting these men so you're not going to do this. And so it just shows that, uh, again, what happens when we begin to compromise with sin and it begins to affect our judgment. All right, and so here we find him making the, these uh, these plea bargains with the world, right? And so, uh, and you know, probably in, in his mind, trying to justify his actions, like, well, at least I'm protecting these guys, right? At least, I, at least, you know, this and that. And so that's kind of what we see there. And so, what does this tell us? Uh, question number seven. What does this tell us about Lot's morality? Eating Hannah. Right, they have been compromised, right? And so here we find again, as I mentioned, it begins, you know, sin begins to cloud your judgment. And so uh, he had learned to function within their, their immorality through compromise. And now, you know, we find him, and, and but the interesting thing is that the Bible calls Lot a righteous man. Right? That's what's interesting about this whole thing, is that uh, yet despite all this, despite his compromise, the Bible still calls him a righteous man. And it even tells us that he was a 
vexed uh, 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 by what was going on in, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Jason, you know. <laughs> hey, 2 Peter and chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Read it. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. And so here we find in the story of Lot, a very tragic story because again the Bible calls him a righteous man. I remember when when Abraham was pleading for the city of Sodom, he's asking God, you know, if you find, you know, if you find, you know, 20 righteous men, will you destroy the city, right? And God's going back and forth with him, no, I want to destroy the city for that many, you know, and, uh, and, and, uh, and you notice a lot, I mean, uh, Abraham didn't work him down to that one individual, uh, and yet, he, uh, you know, he was the only individual, and yet we, uh, we find that he wasn't righteous enough to save the city. That's what's sad about it, right? Because God still ended up destroying the city, even though there was one righteous man, although he saved them out of it. And so Lot shows us kind of a, you know, sad, like this story of a compromising Christian, right? The Bible talks about those who will be saved as one running through the fire, and kind of, that's kind of Lot's life, right? But, uh, he barely made it, but uh, uh, he barely made it as one literally running through the fire. Right? And so, uh, and the, the sad thing about it is that he blunted his own testimony, right? Because he could have saved the city. He could have, uh, uh, you know, prevented what happened, uh, or at least gotten others saved. But now uh, he had uh, affected his own testimony, as we're going to see later on. Um, question number eight What did the angel do to prevent the men of Sodom from breaking into Lot's house? Hit him with confusion and blindness. Right, he struck them with blindness. Right, and, and again, it's kind of a kind of a metaphor for sin. Also, it happens. Right, the Bible talks about uh, those that will continue to live in their sin. That at some point, God gives them over to their sin. It's all that like gives them over to their blindness. Right, and just you know what? As we, and so people blindly continue to live in sin. Right, and then um, question number nine: What did the men of Sodom? Do it in response. Now, let me give out some more scriptures out there. Right? Everybody can get Revelation 16, 10, and 11. Connie, if you can get Jude chapter 1, verse 7. And Jason, if you can get Proverbs 14, 9. So, okay, so the question was what, uh, uh, what did the men of Sodom do in response? Uh, to being struck of blindness. Didn't they try to go into the house, like break into it? They still try to break in. Yeah. Right? The Bible says, our scripture says that, uh, it tells us there in our, in our text, it says, in verse 11, it says, And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great. So that they became really trying to find the door. That's what's it. crazy about the story. That here they are, even just the mind them, imagine them blind. They can't see anymore, and they're still trying to find them. All of a sudden, they became weary. They got so they were trying so hard that they were tired. And they're just they're feeling around everywhere. Where's the door? Where's the door? And they're like, and all of a sudden, they got tired from trying to find the door. And so this shows us again a picture of sin. That now when people give themselves over to it, there's an unwillingness to repent. Right? And again, because this is the full course of sin, right? Where people completely give, it, give themselves over to it uh, to the point where they're unwilling to repent and respond to God's judgment. Uh, we get Revelation uh, 6, 10, and 11. So here the Bible talks about a time that's coming uh, upon the earth, but this is going to be the same situation. We get Revelation. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of of the beast and his kingdom became full of darkness and they nagged their tongue because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains 
and their sores and did not repent of their deeds. Right, as again, the Bible talks about a time of judgment that will come upon the earth where people you know, will be afflicted and struck and judged, and yet the Bible said they still did not repent. Right? This is, uh, this is again, this is what we find in our scripture. That's why, uh, you know, you know, about, you know we, we talked about this before, about how history repeats itself, right? And, and so we're going to see this again playing out into the world. Right? And so that's where we find this. Now, question number 10. Why did the angels ask Lot to take his family out of the city? To try to save them all. To try to save them. Right? It was, a, it was a, a warning of the judgment day that was coming. And now, for the first time, Lot hears of what's going on. Right? He, uh, to this point, he doesn't know what's, what's happening. He just knows that these two men have come. And now, uh, these, men, these angels begin to reveal uh, God's purpose for them. is to save them from the judgment that was coming. Uh, right? Uh, so, uh, uh, Sodom was destined for judgment. Uh, uh, but God wanted to spare Lot and his family and as many as he could take with them. Right, and so uh, we're going to get Jude chapter 1, verse 7. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And so here we find the Bible talking about uh, this, uh, you know, about their corruption and for that, uh, having to suffer the vengeance of eternal fire. So this is where we find them. Uh, you know, God's about to pour out judgment upon Sodom. And so again, remember, everything that we read in the scripture, the Bible says, are there for our example, right? For this is the second time that we see God bringing judgment. Uh, the first time was worldwide, but now it's localized, right? Now it's a, a specific area where God begins to uh, judge the people for their corruption, right? And so now question number 11 is, why did his son-in-laws... Uh, think that Lot was joking. Why did they think he was joking, right? The Bible says that he's trying to warn them, and then he says, to them, it seemed like he was joking. Why do you think that was? Maybe because since he was living there, he just kind of blended in with everybody, so they really didn't take him serious. Right? Yeah, that shows us, again, the consequence of compromise, right? That, and that's the problem when we get into compromise with sin, is that uh, it, it affects our testimony, right? It, it, it damages our credibility as Christians uh, when we begin to dabble in, and compromise with the world. Uh, because it would happen when we're trying to win the world. I'd be like, ah, you know, this guy, there it goes again, right? You know, like, and so that's, and that's how they took a lot, right? They, you, know, you know, all of a sudden, you know, uh, here's this guy that had blended into the society and then really become a part of them and, and kind of compromise. And uh, the Bible never really tells us that he fully engaged in sin. Right? It doesn't tell us that he was out there doing, you know, committing immorality, but he had compromised enough to where they didn't believe him anymore. Right? Uh, and so that was a, uh, the problem there. He had damaged his own credibility. And the effect on Lot's life was the compromise was clear. Right? So now when he spoke uh, 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 with utmost seriousness, uh, uh, no one took him seriously of the judgment that was coming. And that's what's sad about it, because if you know, he would have kept that, because, uh, you know, again, he could have, you know, the problem, you know, not so much that he lived there, because, I mean, the Bible says we're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? And so we live, uh, sometimes we live in the midst of a lot of corruption that goes on around us, but God still calls us to keep a clean testimony, and that's what's sad about it, is that if he would have uh, kept a clean testimony, he could have saved a lot more. Can you imagine uh, if he would have uh, had a you know, righteous testimony and his sons and laws would have actually believed him, they would have been saved. But yet, because of his compromise, now they took him uh, uh, as a joke, right? And so this shows us that uh, uh, the life of Lot shows us that, that it is possible to be saved and yet waste uh, our salvation, right? Waste uh, our testimony. Lot would have been saved, uh, but, you know, he accomplished nothing in the process. And as we'll learn later, uh, it even affected his own daughter, right? As we, as we were, and his wife, as we read later, he did all this back to because of his own compromise. So question number 12, uh, why did the angels take hold of Lot's uh, in his family's hands? Because they were lingering. They lingered, right? And so it shows us that they, there was still something there that was appealing to 
Lot, maybe he thought, like, oh, you know, maybe they won't destroy the whole city, right? Maybe I, maybe I can find a place to hide out, and, you know, maybe, you know, when, when we get out of this, then I'll really strike the rich. I'll be, you know, the only man in town, right? And so, you know, who knows what he was thinking, right? But uh, again, the Bible says he lingered, and yet, uh, in the mercy of God, he still, you know, grabs him by the hand and pulls him out. Right? Uh, so this is uh, what we see. So now question number 13. What, uh, what was the instructions uh, uh, that the angels gave to Lot after they uh, had brought them out of the city? Don't look back. Don't look back. Right? It says in our text, it says, escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Right? But then we find, again, Lot... Uh, again, Bobby was a compromise, wanted to stay near enough. Remember, he, he had pitched his tent towards, so towards Sodom, and now as he's fleeing, he still wants to keep his tent towards Sodom, right? And so, uh, right, so that's right. So, uh, the question is, why did Lot request to be allowed to take refuge in Zohar? It was a nearby city. It was close enough, right? That's how a lot of times we, you know, that's a problem that a lot of times we repent and, uh, of our sin, but then we stay close enough to, and that's a lot of times why we end up going back, right? Because we stay close enough. We don't totally deal with the issue, right? Uh, but in our text, it tells us that the, you know, the reason why he, wanted, he asked to, to escape to the city of Soar was because, uh, uh, because of fear. He was afraid to go up to the mountains, right? And so again, I think this is another consequence of, of his own compromise with sin that, you know, the thing is, you can't compromise without it affecting your entire being, your emotions. And now here's a man filled with anxiety and fear, right? Because of his, uh, the Bible talks about when you're an indecisive man and you're like a, the, the, the waves of the sea tossed uh, back and forth, a double-minded man, right? And so this is what we find. He's a double-minded man. Uh, he's filled with fear. You know, uh, you know, God tells him to escape to the mountains. He's afraid to go to the mountains. He wants to stay here, uh, here in the city. But the only good thing that came out of that is that by his, because of that, he actually saved that city. Because if you catch it, God was going to destroy that city as well. He was destroying all the cities around there. And yet, because of Abraham, uh, uh, you know, because of his fear of going into the mountains, God said, okay, you can go there, and I won't, I won't destroy that city. But isn't that why uh, when uh, he told, when Lot told Abraham, okay, I'm going to go my way, he chose the plains instead of the hills? He still kept choosing the the, the planes. Why? No, like in the like in the beginning, oh, he chose the planes, right? right? Instead of the hills. Mm -hmm. When Abraham, yeah. when Abraham told him, "Hey, you can choose, you know, which way you want to go, whether the hills or the planes," and he still chose the planes. Why? Why? Why not the hills in the beginning? Probably because the planes were places of prosperity. It's kind of like you know, like in our city, right? Kind of where we live. You think about we're kind of in the planes here, right? And this is where all the businesses are at. This is where wealth is at. You know what I mean? And, some people don't want to be up in the mountains. I don't know. I just kind of, I think from a just financial perspective, it's probably more, more of the, more, uh, more of the, like, the, I guess, wealth, you know, to make, or uh, that's what I'm thinking from that point, uh, where, you know, yeah. There's a sermon in there somewhere. He chose the, 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 the planes instead the of the hills. Ground, instead of the high ground. Thanks, brother. <laughs> <laughs> So now, uh, brings us to question number 14. Uh, was it? Uh, question number 15. At what point did God's judgment fall on Sodom and Gomorrah? When Lot got to the city. The when other Lot city. got to the city, right? Yeah, when he got to the other city. So he entered the city and BAM! There it goes. <laughs> You know what, we skipped over that one that I given you, um, Jason. Yeah. Which was the one that we read is the one that I gave you was a uh, fool's mock at sin, which is kind of goes like you know when the people didn't take him serious. But um, if you can get this next one actually, this uh, first Thessalonians 5.9. If you could read that one. Because it kind of shows us here what we're going over, you know, how God waited till um, till uh, Lot was out of the city, right? And so he entered Zoar. Then God brought judgment. It shows us, kind of shows us a bigger, wider picture because the Bible talks about our salvation. And the Bible says that we are not appointed to wrath. 
right? And so that's like kind of a picture of the rapture, right? And so that's kind of like what we see with Lot 5. It's almost a picture of the Lot of the rapture. God taking them out of, of the city that's about to be judged in the same way. The Bible tells us that we're going to be taken out of this world before judgment falls on the world, just like God uh, took the, uh, uh, Noah and his family into the ark, uh, and a judgment fell on the earth, and the flood waters came. Uh, Noah floated in the ark above the judgment, right? And so again, all this is a picture of our of our own salvation of the uh, of, of the rapture. And so if you can read uh, uh, First Thessalonians five nine, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? So that's, that's what we have too, right? We have that, that promise that, that God has not appointed us to wrath, right? And so that's, a, that's a, a God's promise to you and I. Now, question number 16, uh, what happened to Lot's wife? She turned to a pillar of sand, of salt. Oh. Salt, right? And so here again, we find her looking back to Sodom, and I don't think it's just, I don't think it was so much of a look, just kind of like when you're running, like, just looking behind you, like, and more like a longing uh, look, right? She must have looked back, maybe even sighed, and, oh, man, I really missed that. <laughs> like, because of pride, and, and the reason why is because, remember, they went into Sodom, but now Sodom had gotten into them. And this is the problem, and this is the tragedy of, of Lot's life, is what it did to his own family, right? And, uh, and, and this is a thing for the men here, you know, that's really a, a warning to us, right, as men, because I know that as men, God holds us accountable for our families, right? Uh, and the decisions that we make affect our families, right? And that's why it's important that you and I hold the line, right, and, and stand our ground, not compromise, because uh, when we compromise, it has a way of bleeding into our family and affecting them, right? And this would happen to lot because of his own compromise, and again, maybe he didn't go in deep enough, but his wife did, right? And, you know, she had a, a you know, a, and for the, you know, so she looks back, you know, Abraham, you know, finally after leaving, he learned his lesson and ran off, you know, and didn't look back, but she did, right? She still had Sodom in her. Right? And, uh, Edward, if you get this, this one, Luke 17, 31 to 33. In that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods, his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Right, so here we find, uh... Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. Right, and so here we find the, the admonition uh, the, to remember Lot's wife, right? And so here's again, it, it, it's uh, uh, preceded by the scripture, uh, whoever seeks his safest life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. So here, uh, you know, she was trying to save her life. Whatever little bit she had there, she's looking back longingly, wanting that. And so that's, uh, you know what, we have to be willing to just cut it off and sever all, you know, ties uh, to the old life. Right? And so this is the problem that, you know, that she did not do that. Now, question number 17, what is the reason given for Lot being saved from God's judgment? Abraham. Abraham, Abraham right? Abraham's faithfulness. The Bible says that God remembered Abraham and sent out Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. Right? And it shows again the importance of us interceding for our family, interceding for our loved ones. Uh, uh, you know, when our prayers come before the Lord, right? And so we need to continue to be a people of prayer, right? Continue to contend for our families. Uh, because here we find, uh, because, of, because of Abraham's intercession, uh, you know what? Uh, that Lot's life was spared. Amen. Um, now, question number 18. Why did Lot leave the city of Zoar? So now right, he's in Zoar. And he's there, uh, God saves him, but now the Bible says he leaves the city as well. So why did he leave Zor? Because he was a fool. And something else. He was afraid. He was afraid. Right? That was, again, remember I talked about, again, the consequence of sin and compromises. That here's a man full of fear and anxiety. Right? So God gives him that opportunity to stay in Zor. Now, you know, I can't stay there. He, he 
He's all like, he's paranoid. He's probably thinking people are out to get him now. Who knows what he's thinking? Of. And he runs off. Uh, uh, and he runs off to the mountains. And there we find the final, uh, the ultimate consequence of sin in his life. And so, question number nineteen: What was the, fi the final outcome of Lot's compromise? His daughter is laid with them. Right? It was an incestual relationship with his daughters. And, and again, remember that? The reason why all that happened, because remember, I was talking about as the, as the man, you influence and affect your family. So I'm sure his daughters probably remembered what he did back in Sodom. Right? They remembered when Lot offered them up. Right? And how he justified their, you know, he justified that, uh, uh, that, you know, horrible act, right? And so I'm sure that they saw that and they said, well, I guess that's the way it works, you know? And so now they began to compromise. They, they began to justify their actions. And the reality, and here's the people, and, and all this, notice that in all of this, that they never stopped the Lord uh, in prayer. I right? never did they say, God, you know, what do you want us to do, right? They, they were only concerned with the earthly, uh, of service of life, they wanted to preserve the family lineage, and the fact is, they could have preserved it uh, another way, right? They could have uh, uh, ended up, uh, uh, you know, going uh, and later on going to you know, back to Abraham's family, and back to their uh, where they came from, and, and married uh, uh, there, right? But because of their compromise, because of their own father's compromise, now uh, they're you know justifying their actions, uh, uh, and in the end, uh, they end up committing this horrible act, and out of that we. We come uh, to the last question. What nations resulted from Lot's ancestral relationship? The Moabites. And what? The people of Ammon. The people of Ammon, the Ammonites, right? And again, uh, you find that, uh, that those people end up cre uh, 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 creating a lot of uh, heartache to the people of Israel later on. Right, so here, because of that relationship, uh, here they spawned off these uh, uh, two uh, group of people that ended up uh, becoming a problem for Israel later because of a, a, a one man's decision. Right, and so that's what shows us again the lesson of how important our decisions are, how important uh, our faithfulness is to hold the line, not to compromise. Right, even when the world uh, seems attractive, right, sometimes a uh, devil's going to do that. He's going to show you a shiny little object that uh, they all look how pretty. <laughs> right? And then we're going to walk towards it. Uh, eventually, we end up in it. And eventually, it ends up in us. Right? Uh, and then we find the full consequence of the full course of sin. And so, with that, this evening, we're going to close there. Is there any, uh, any questions about what we covered today? All right, we're going to put uh, close off and uh, if I can have every head bowed and every eye closed and reverence to God and respect to your neighbor in this place. And so tonight we looked at the tragic story of, of, of Lot's life, right, which is a picture of a man that began to compromise with sin, he began to compromise with the world. The Bible says again, I know it's repetitious, but it bears a uh, saying again, here's a man that began to be attracted to Solomon. Uh, so as he looked at the plains of the Jordan, he was attracted by his wealth, by his prospects of uh, prosperity. He ends up going off. Uh, he pitches his tent towards Sodom, and eventually ends up in Sodom, and ultimately Sodom ends up in him. And that's the same thing that can happen to us. We begin to look towards the world. We end up uh, being attracted by the world. We go towards the world. We end up in the world, and ultimately the world ends up in us. And so this evening, I'm going to give an invitation tonight in this place because perhaps you're listening to this message and perhaps you've compromised with sin, right? You've allowed yourself uh, the attractiveness of this world, uh, uh, the, the deceitfulness of riches, the deceitfulness of the pleasures of this world uh, to deceive you. You went off into the world and eventually the world ended up in you and now you find yourself uh, uh, you know, in the, uh, stuck uh, uh, in the world uh, uh, you know, perhaps uh, tonight you want to uh, give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to repent of your sins and that's you this evening. Uh, because the wonderful thing about this story is that God is a merciful God. Right? That God had mercy on Lot's life. And so tonight, uh, uh, because Lot could have refused. Lot could have said, you know what, we're going to stay here. We don't believe you. They could have stood in the city and they would have been judged with the city. But they responded to the warning. And perhaps you're listening tonight and you're here and you're listening because God is warning you. Right, that there is judgment that is coming. Right, there is judgment that is coming upon this world. 
And maybe, uh, maybe the judgment that is still far off, but you know what? There's judgment that's coming on your life. That God, because God will judge sin. Right? And God is bringing you a warning, but tonight you want to respond to that warning. You want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Receive the forgiveness of sin. And that's you tonight. You must simply lift your hand and we will gladly pray with you a simple prayer of repentance this evening. Anyone in this place, you're unsaved or backslidden tonight. That's at one time you did walk with the Lord, but you began to compromise it. You went off uh, uh, into the road and you find yourself backslidden, but tonight you want to rededicate your life. And that's you this evening uh, if you would simply lift your hand tonight. Very well tonight. I want to do one thing for those of you that are listening online. I can't see your hand, but God can see your heart. And you want to respond uh, this evening. You want to pray with me a simple prayer of repentance. I want you to pray with me say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I need you to forgive me. I believe that you died on the cross and that you shed your blood and by your blood I'm forgiven of all my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead and by the power of your resurrection you can come into my life and change my life. I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we thank you this day, Lord God, for the precious gift of salvation. We thank you, Lord God, that you have spared us uh, from the judgment that is to come, uh, that you have not appointed us unto wrath. Uh, help us, Lord God, to respond uh, with a humble heart. Uh, Lord, that we would respond to the warnings that you give us, Lord God. Uh, Lord, that we would want uh, and repent us before you, Lord God. And we thank you, we praise you, we give you all this glory in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. For those of you that are tuning in on live stream, I want to encourage you to give your life to the Lord tonight. I want to encourage you to get connected with us. You can go to our website, uh, the door When you go there, there's a uh, there's actually a link there to or it says uh, uh, to get involved, new believers. And as you do that, uh, you have a drop down. You're able to give us your contact information. If you do that, we'll get in communication. Uh, we'll get in contact with you. So I would encourage you to do that. And so we're going to uh, uh, we're going to close off uh, this uh, uh, evening. We're going to go ahead and pray. Uh, actually, we're going to uh, sing that song "Let Jesus Higher" as we count ourselves dismissed uh, uh, this uh, this evening. Let Jesus high. Let Jesus high. Lift them up for the world to see. Set it on. From the earth, I will draw on and on to me. Lift Jesus high, lift Jesus high, lift them up for the world to see. He said it right.